Good day, I'm Jo Masangya, a fifth-year BSMSC student of the Ateneo de Manila University. Much has changed in the modern electric power plant since Thomas Edison's era, but the parts that actually turn heat into electrons haven't changed since his Eureka moments. Whether burning coal, concentrating sunlight, or splitting atoms, most thermal power plants use the energy for the same thing heating water into steam to drive a turbine. After more than a century of incremental improvements and countless trials, engineers have looked in the idea of replacing steam with supercritical carbon dioxide, a technique that could unlock up to 60% greater thermal efficiency using a smaller, cheaper turbine. That's why I'm here to present the use of supercritical carbon dioxide in a closed Brayton cycle to power a 6 megawatt gas turbine engine developed by Peregrine Turbine Technologies. The term supercritical describes the state of carbon dioxide above its critical temperature and pressure, in which carbon dioxide exhibits these promising properties. First, it is nearly twice as dense as steam, resulting in a very high power density. Second, it inhibits no phase change at any point of the cycle. Hence, its state is isolated. Also, it is easier to compress than steam and allows a generator to extract power from a turbine at higher temperature. That's why it is 40 to 60% more efficient than the current technology. The net result is a simpler turbine that can be 10 times smaller than its steam equivalent. A steam turbine usually has between 10 to 15 rotor stages. On the other hand, a supercritical turbine equivalent would have four stages that can be four inches in diameter, four feet long, and could power 1,000 homes operating with a closed Brayton cycle. The idea is to create a small, simple, cleaner, and cheaper machine. Right now, Sandia, one of the task laboratories to study for this future technology, will begin running tests to see if this supercritical carbon dioxide-aided cycle can perform up to expectations. By 2019, they want to maintain this technology and plan to commercialize it for bigger reactors by 2035. Well, also because of these awesome advantages. It includes less work, more distributed power generation, low cost, it is greener since Brayton Cycle also offers direct environmental benefits. For one, it's carbon neutral. The system takes carbon dioxide out of the air and puts it in a recompression cycle loop, hence low carbon emission. Just as important is the fact that the system limits water usage by minimizing discharge, evaporation, and withdraw. On top of that, it can also be used with all heat sources, opening up a wide array of previously unavailable markets for power production. This technology is promising in our country given the power distribution situation in the Philippines. We are facing rural areas with no access to electricity, lack of electric reserves which causes power shortages and frequent blackouts. With this device, we can mend the power distribution system in the Philippines since it can be distributed to any power generation. Also, Sandia's generator can work in places where water is in limited supply, which is an important consideration for our country, saving groundwater and municipal water for other uses. The relevant patent related for this idea is from Matthew Alexander Lihar, entitled Compound Closed-Loop Heat Cycle System for Recovering Waste Heat and Method, in which the patent claims to use the same turbine cycle but it does not directly use supercritical carbon dioxide and the turbine for this patent is much bigger than that of the peregrine turbine. This new promising technology of using supercritical carbon dioxide is surely a breakthrough for power generation supply and distribution problem. Thanks to the effort of the Sandia National Laboratory and Dr. James Pash, who is the head researcher, this is definitely a new era of power generation set in motion. Thank you for listening.